All right, so jumping into hair card creation now, uh, I used a method that I found online. I've credited the person in the article uh, if you want to check them out. All right, so very briefly, uh, the process is you start off with a scratch generator node here. And uh, in the settings, you can turn down some of the, um, the settings. All right, so if we turn down the rotation random, distortion random, and then the position random, we can see we can get this down to a point like this. And then we can increase the scale like this. All right, if we just quickly um, hook this up to a transformation 2D, we can then rotate, holding down shift, rotate 90 degrees. You can also go back to here and do a start and end like this. Everything's set up here to 4K. You can choose 2K. I prefer the resolution. And then you can play around with the values here. So um, you can choose to have some distortion like this to give it more of a frizzy hair. Um, and I think it's just important to recognize uh, how hair cards work. So usually you have a base that covers the scalp and this base probably is best to be clean and um, not too much distortion and just quite a flat um, looking hair card and then you can create more dynamic looking hairs um, as well so this is what I've done here so there's loads of different variations they're all hooked up to a blend node um, so they're blended together and then eventually you can just tile them like this okay um, Eventually you get your full tile and these are all just the hairs and then transformed into their position here. Okay. And then from here we can then hook them up to make the maps that we need. And these maps will be the diffuse so hooked up to a color, uniform color and then a blend. And then we can create a space color here and then ambient occlusion node a normal node and then a curve node which then we can push and pull the black and white values to create our transparency here and once you're happy with the look you can then save each of these out um, and then what we'll do now is jump into Maya and I'll show you about um, placing these cards um, on the scalp okay so inside of Maya now we'll build these hair cards so the first thing to do, just build a plane and assign this plane a Lambert and this Lambert material um, has already the texture set up so I'll just talk you through that real quick inside the color is our color of course transparency is the transparency map we exported and then in butt mapping I import the normal map, set it to raw and tangent space normals and then if I zoom in you can see the effect of the normal here okay so um once you've done this inside of the polyplane we can set the subdivision width to 2 and the height to a 3 and then inside of the UV editor if I select the plane you can see the UVs here right what we want to do is make uh, a plane per hair clump so if I go into the UV shell, let's make this one over here as an example. And then scale this also. Okay, maybe something like this. I might turn down the... Um, normal map effect all right and once this is done something i recommend doing is creating some curvature to the plane so maybe pushing this out in three mode you can see a bit better all right once you're happy with that then you just simply duplicate this move it over here and then this one will be this one here 
and we want to scale the card in here relative to the shape so this one will look a bit more elongated something like this okay and once you do this for all of them then you end up with this so these have all been placed and i did paint some color variation on the uh diffuse as you can see this is the new one so just creating some uh root and tip variation and then also this is actually a fong shader which means that i can have some um some shine to it all right so we can just select the thicker card here to create a base for the scalp duplicate move over and then begin to position onto the head remember to use references it's really important and just simply work the hair card to the curvature of the scalp you can rotate vertices as well alright so once you've placed a hair card like this so what I recommend doing is just um, playing around with this when you first start uh, it's not easy to get a nice look when you're first trying this and it just takes time so just learning how to maneuver these vertices to stick to the head and try and avoid too much clipping like this just make sure things feel clean and even as well and if you press 3 you can see it in smooth mode and we can then move these out a bit more like this say so we're happy with the shape we can duplicate right and then we can move it over and what i tend to do is just do one half and then i can mirror it later and then i can build uh, asymmetry with some of the finer um, hair textures here all right and then eventually you can then use um say like i said some of these finer ones to break the illusion of hair cards so oops So these are like transitioning hair cards. And these can also be used as like flyaway hairs. I remember to follow this kind of um, fundamental of um, the S shape. Okay, so having this curvature is really important for hair. So, okay, we can push this in a bit more. Remember to check for clipping, so this seems to be doing okay. And so yeah, the idea would be just to fill it all um, in with, with the hair cards and then eventually you may get a nice result. So this is the final result. This is actually the subdivided result. So you can see that there has more um, topology. And you can see how I um, used the smaller uh, hair textures to break the hair up and um, create flyaway hairs here. So if you select the group, you combine and then you can export this out. And then what we'll be doing next is bringing this into ZBrush and then Character Creator. Alright, so inside of ZBrush now, I'm going to just quickly append and then import the hair cards like this all right and then from here we can also import any other um, things that you make for the character so I've made a shirt I'm gonna add that in there's a high poly version of the shirt in another scene that, so I picked out the normal map for that so all we need to read into character create is a low poly so I'm gonna bring these into and then once we have these all ready, we can also do some manipulation to the hair um, using the BMV brush. So move. And you can make some easier changes through using this tool here. Okay, so once you've uh, tweaked the hair to your liking, then the next thing we want to do just before we jump into character creator is flip the uh, UVs. 
in character creator, the UVs will be flipped uh, vertically. So if we take care of that here, then we can ensure that we can just plug in our maps uh, as straightforward as possible. So what we'll do is we'll go to the subtool, let's say they're here. And then we'll go to UV maps. And then under adjust, we can flip view. And then we'll do this for all our, our extra subtools like the shirt. And we'll do that again here and flip view. And once we've taken care of that, we can then just press the all button and jump back into character creator. All right, guys, I'm just going to talk you through some of the materials real quick. So we've got our AO, color, normal, transparency, roughness, spec, tangent. Okay. Very simply, inside a character creator now, what we have is our hair imported. If we click on the hair cards here, we make sure that the shader type is set to digital human hair. And then we just insert the maps I just showed into the slot. The textures have been imported. So I'm going to just uh, move the camera around to show you. So it looks a bit like this right now. Something that you can do also is if you select the hair, side of this editor here, underneath accessory, you can smooth the mesh. If I click on smooth mesh, we can smooth it. We can also subdivide it even more, so we can do it two, three times if we wish. We can also tessellate it like this, okay? Next, if I go underneath the materials and I scroll down, we see these two extra slots. So this one will be the specular map, so I'll just put that in. Okay, so I'm going to quickly explain um, what this hair tangent map slot means. So at the moment, it's got red, which is the correct color. Um, and this is just something you can just make in Photoshop, just a 2K uh, square tar with the red color filled in you can see that there's this shine that goes from the root to the tip like this if i insert a green color which on reillusion site talks about it being a horizontal direction you can see that the effect feels incorrect right so make sure that this is on a red color and that's it really you can then change the roughness of the hair uh, the transmission strength and that will be when light is um, on the back of the head for example you'll see a sort of a glow uh, the diffuse strength and specular strength, a secondary specular strength. So there are lots of options um, to play around with the hair here. And eventually when you get the look that you, you like, then you can uh, move on with me to look deaf.